Right, hello there. This video is the first video about giant structures, so we'll have a look at metals which form giant metallic structures. So I'm going to cover the structure of metals with you. And we'll have a look at the forces of attraction that hold a metal together. We'll have a look at the properties of metals and we'll relate those properties to the structure. Finally, we'll have a look at alloys and why the properties of alloys are different from pure metal. Now, metals start off life as a lattice of atoms, but the atoms are so tightly squeezed together that the outer shell electrons are squeezed out of the structure. That gives us a lattice of positive ions. So in each one of these circles, we should put a plus charge to show that we've got a positive ion. Now, I won't keep you here whilst I complete all of this. Bear with me. So there we go, a lattice of positive ions. Now, the electrons become delocalised. That means they don't belong to a particular ion anymore and they're free to move throughout the structure. So we call that a sea of delocalised electrons. Let me put the electrons in. So if you need to describe a giant metallic structure, it's a lattice of positive ions and a sea of delocalised electrons. So what is metallic bonding? Well, metallic bonding is a strong electrostatic attraction between the lattice of positive ions and the sea of delocalised electrons. So that summarises everything so far. So let's have a look at the properties of metals. So firstly, metallic bonding strong. It acts in three dimensions. So therefore, metals have got high melting and boiling points because it takes a lot of heat energy to break all the strong metallic bonds. Metals are malleable. Now, malleable means that metals can be rolled into a flat sheet or hammered into sheets. So that means they're easy to shape. And the reason for that is that the positive ions occur in layers and the layers can slide over one another. Metals are also ductile. That means that we can pull or draw them into a wire. And that's exactly the same reason, because the layers of positive ions can slide over one another. Most importantly, metals will conduct electricity when they're solid. Nothing else will other than carbon in the form of graphite. Now, the reason for this is that the electrons are delocalised, they can move throughout the structure, carrying a charge with them. Metals are also sonorous. Now that means if you hit them, they'll make a ringing sound. Now a lot of the properties of a metal are linked to the fact that the ions, the positive ions, occur in layers and they can slide over one another. That makes a lot of pure metals really quite soft. For example, you wouldn't make a piece of jewellery like a ring out of pure gold. It would be too soft. But quite often we make alloys out of metals. Now an alloy is a mixture of a metal with another element or elements. And they could be other metals or a non-metal like carbon. For example, a lot of types of steel contain iron with small percentages of carbon. Now that can change the properties of a metal quite a lot. So this could be the structure of an alloy. Now, really importantly, you can see that the layers of positive ions are disrupted and they can no longer slide over one another. And that makes alloys usually a lot harder than the pure metal. So just to give you a couple of examples, mild steel, for example, contains up to 0.25% of carbon. That's quite flexible and can be used in car bodies, for example. 
High carbon steel contains between 0.6 and 1.2% of carbon. That's much harder than using cutting tools. Stainless steel is a mixture of iron, chromium and nickel, and that's used in cutlery because it is resistant to corrosion. Okay, that's giant metallic structures, hopefully made simple. Thanks for watching.